So, you're an interior designer and decided to use Midjourney, but you don't know where to start. AI tool like Midjourney is evolving super quick every day, and you can not only create beautiful interior design images, but different architectural style drawings, high quality mood boards, and they just launched a new feature where you can edit a specific area you want to change. In this video, I'm going to break down the basics of Midjourney into easily digestible steps so you can start using on your creative process. I want you guys to treat this video as your intro introductory course to Mid Journey and hopefully by the end of this video you'll feel confident to start using Mid Journey. Let's get started. So Mid Journey is especially helpful when you're looking to generate fresh ideas, inspiration and new concepts in the early stages of your design process. As you know, the design process moves through various phases from pre-design to schematic design or concept development, followed by more technical stages like design development and documentation, and finally closing out with the conversion and administration. Midjourney is ideal for the initial creative stages because it's more of a tool of your concept generation and inspiration. It's another media you can use alongside of your Pinterest, but instead of spending hours trying to find the right images that convey your design intent, you can use Midjourney to generate the specific style you're looking for right away. It really helps you brainstorm completely new ideas early on, allowing you to explore more possibilities. On the other hand, Midjourney is not going to replace traditional softwares like AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, as it's not suitable for detailed design work in later phases. Because it lacks in precision and technical capabilities needed for creating specific measurements, structural details or technical drawings. Before we start creating images, let's quickly talk about how to set up Midjourney. To get started with Midjourney, sign up at midjourney.com, choose a login method and view the subscription options by selecting join now or subscribe. Midjourney offers four subscription tiers available for monthly payments or yearly payments. With each of these plans, it's important to understand how many images you can create each month. Midjourney uses something called GPU time to measure how much you can create. The basic plan gives you about 200 minutes, which roughly translates to 200 images creation jobs. The standard plan gives you about 15 hours and pro plan for 30 hours and 60 hours for the mega plan. These three plan offers relaxed mode as well, which is essentially unlimited image creation, but they complete more slowly. The pro and mega plan are more for business purposes as they also have a feature to keep your creations private from other mid journey users. But if you're a beginner, you may find the basic plan a good starting point. This is the one I'm currently using too. And once you feel comfortable, you can upgrade to the standard plan. Next, let's do some quick tour of the website. So once you logged into this page, you start with this home page. And in this video, I'll show you how to create images using the desktop version on your laptop. Let's start with the explore page where you'll find the recent creation from the Mid Journey community. This is a great place to get inspired and see the possibilities. You can browse images by category such as random, hot or top rated with filters for daily, weekly or monthly views. You can also look for specific keywords using this search bar over here and you can learn the prompts other creator has used to create these images as well. Next, we have the Create page, your main workspace for generating images. This is where we will be spending most of the time on our video, but you will enter prompts in the Imagine bar at the top. And these are default settings that we'll explore later. And you can also search through your previous prompts here. The Organize page acts as your personal gallery where all of your saved images are stored. From this page, you can filter, search and download your images. 
There is also a chat feature for collaborating with other users, including spaces like the newbies and prompt craft rooms, which are especially useful for beginners. Lastly, the task page offers activities you can play to help improve mid journeys, understanding of your preferences of the image style that you like. Right, so that was a quick tour and let's write our first prompt. When you're first trying out, I don't want you guys to put too much pressure in making a great prompt. At first, you want to test things out. So for instance, since we're using for interior design, let's try choosing a style of the interior and give a place we want to create. So I'm going to try Scandinavian coffee shop with plants. Once you let Mid Journey do its thing, they come up with four images and right now it's showing with the landscape images as I have this as my default, but you can customize the setting in this parameter. In this parameter, you can basically change images side from portrait, square to landscape. And in the aesthetic section, you can play around with these three settings. Stylizations influences how strongly Mid Journey aesthetic will be applied. Low stylization creates images that closely match to your prompt but less artistic. The higher you go, the Mid Journey will start applying its own details and create more artistic images. So let's test this feature. I'm going to bring the stylization bar up to 600 and let's see what happens. You can close this property and by clicking over the original prompt, you can bring back the same text into the imagine bar. And I'm going to submit the prompt. You can now see that Mid Journey has applied its own aesthetics and now it looks 100 times better and has created this realistic and detailed rendering photo. Now let's go back and check out the other option. Weirdness introduces quirky qualities to your generated images, resulting in unique and unexpected outcomes. So I'm going to try this option too and bring the bar up to 2300 and let's see what happens. So now you can see that the mid journey has created very different options from the previous version. I'm not even sure if this falls under Scandinavian palette, but I quite like this option for example, and we can see that mid journey has brought quirkness to the outcome. Let's go back again and try the last option. This variety option influences how varied the images are. High value will produce more unusual and unexpected results and compositions. Lower value have more reliable and repeatable results. So I'm going to set up the variety bar now up to 40 and let's see what Mid Journey will create this time. So we can see that we've got four completely different style of images. Some of them don't even have plants anymore. And we can understand that the higher we go on variation, the more far away it will be from our original prompt. The result will change every time. So you kind of have to test it out and see which one works for you. But I definitely thought the stylization feature has elevated the images and weirdness bar can help us think outside of the box. Now let's go back to the original image and talk about the style. As we've seen, Mid Journey has created four different styles of images, but because I didn't specify any details, Mid Journey chose the style for me. As you submit more prompts, you'll learn that Mid Journey has its own bias and you need to add more details to describe images that you want to create. The key to creating the best images lies in how well you craft your prompt and we can use the following formula. Style, photography parameters, subject, details, environment and atmosphere. So let's look at the style. So you can choose a style that fits your design approach such as photograph, rendering, sketch, editorial style photo. In photography, you can specify technical aspects like high resolution 8K or close up to ensure image quality. And then for the subject, it focuses on the subject, whether it's a space, interior, exterior, or mood board or material board. And then you can add details to specify design elements like high ceiling, hardwood floors or specific style of furniture like Carl Hansen chair and specific design details like hanging plants raft. 
and you can add the environment you can basically choose a setting such as like rural japan or city center london and finally you can write the atmosphere which is describing the lighting and colors basically you can set the mood with descriptive phrases like giving everything a warm welcoming glow or soft golden light filter through the window so let's try writing more detailed prompts by using this formula I'm going to now write editorial style high resolution photo of Scandinavian coffee shop shot off the cafe with Scandinavian furniture, light color palette with timber floor, exposed ceiling, terrazzo coffee island with feature planting raft with people having conversation in central Copenhagen autumn, soft golden light filter through the industrial window. You can now see that the images are a lot more high quality. Medjourney has created four high render images and now it looks more architectural. But you're thinking, I do like these images, but still not quite right and want to explore more. Let's now explore how you can customize, alter and enhance one of these images. In the upper right, you can see the original prompts that was used. You can click the heart to add the image that you like. Search images similar to this one. This one, you can download the image and clicking this three lines will reveal more options or you can right click the image to show some of these as well. And in the lower right, there is a set of actions that we can perform on the image. You can hover over any of these options to get quick info on what they are. Very subtle and very strong. Clicking either of these button will automatically submit a new job where Midjourney creates new variations using this image as a base. So let's try it out. Midjourney has created very similar four images, but if you look closely, they are different very subtly. For example, just flicking through four images, we can see that some of the stools option has changed. This feature is useful if the image you want is close enough, but maybe you need a little shake up. Now let's go back to the original image so we can see more options. I just want to show you guys what will happen with the strong option as well. You can see that now Midjourney has created different spatial design, but still keeping the original style of design. They all have a different layout to the space, but materiality and color tones are still the same. I really actually like this design, so let's select this image to discover more options. Upscale increases the image resolution. Subtle creates a larger copy without changing the original, and Creative creates larger copy adding more details. Remix is a powerful tool. It builds upon this imagery by creating similar ones with a new or updated prompt. If you select subtle, smaller differences for fine tuning an image, and if you click strong, the larger differences for moving in with the new direction. So I'm going to show you trying out subtle Remix, and I'm going to change within the original prompts from Tirato to Marble Coffee Bar Island instead and hit submit. You can now see that Mid Journey has only added marble effect to the island and kept everything else as the previous image. Okay, back to the menu. So pan lets you extend the canvas in a specific direction and you can use zoom to zoom out the image to see more surrounding context. Rerun creates new images again using the same prompt and this button takes you to Midjourney image editor which I'll explain it a little bit in a second. And finally, this image style and prompt button lets you use the image as a reference in the new prompt. For example, using a styling reference means that Midjourney will apply the similar style and the visual aesthetics of this image to the new prompt. For example, I can grab the original prompt and change the space to a sushi restaurant instead of coffee shop. And Midjourney will keep the style and aesthetics of the design, but tweak the spatial layout to a sushi counter. This is more advanced features, so I won't get into a lot of details today, but you can find more tutorials specifically about this feature on YouTube. So let's get into the editor button. 
This editor is a powerful tool for making specific changes to the image. You can modify parts of the image using this free paint eraser tool. Zoom out, pan, change the aspect ratio and edit the prompt text. The mid journey will only change the empty space so everything here will remain the same. Click submit then close so we're back at the create page. And here's the result. The editor is one of the best ways to make adjustments to an image. That was everything for this video. I feel like there is still a limitation to how much Midjourney can customize some images to actually implement to real life projects. But I actually found the erase and edit tool really revolutionary and I can't wait to see what more features will be available for us in the future. Hope you guys found this video helpful. It was actually quite overwhelming to film this tutorial, so I would really appreciate if you learned something new. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with my latest content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!